Okay, um, if you would all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kindly accept this as notice that prior to our meeting today, the board met in executive session to discuss issues of personnel and legal matters, at least one of which is not docketed, the other of which is docketed CV-2022-002234. Um, moving on now to uh, the recognition of Jim Venkoski, who is being awarded the Preservation Award for Tales from the Museum by the Heritage Commission of Delaware County. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Tammy Cohen, the Director of Parks and Recreation. Um, I just want to say uh, th you know, thank you this evening for being able to present this award. At this time, I'd like to invite Commissioner Farhi down uh, along with me and also invite up Jim Van Vankoski, who is the, uh, the curator and president, founder, legacy leader of the Sports Legends of Delaware County. Uh, tonight, we want to take an opportunity to recognize Jim uh, and the members of the Sports Legends of Delaware County who were contributing writers of Tales from the Museum. Uh, this great book uh, that they produced was actually the recipient of the Heritage Commission of Delaware County's uh, Preservation Award just recently. I know Jim attended an event uh, to receive the award on Saturday. So I want to take an opportunity to recognize Jim. He was the producer of this great anthology of all these stories about the great athletes of Delaware County. Um, of course, the Delaware County Commission's uh, philosophy is preservation and history, and this is something that surely does that all across the county uh, with athletes who are world-class athletes, national athletes, um, you name it. Um, you certainly gave them something in, in producing this book to sink their teeth into, that's for sure. And really what sets this book apart is the fact that it's not just, you know, a story of the medals and the artifacts and, and all the details, but it's the stories and the relationships that, that you have made with them and the connections that you have made with them. And that's what really makes it special. So uh, we have an award for you. I know uh, Commissioner Fari has some words he would like to share as well. I'll be brief, but thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, walking in here every time, I'm in awe when I see all this great sports memorabilia. And I think a lot of people that finally make it into the township building see it. Because of you, we have a beautiful statue of Emlyn Tunnel outside. And again, to Tammy's point, you're not preserving history, you're keeping legacies alive. And that's the most important thing. So thank you for making what we have out here and this book and everything not, uh, it's a passion to you and it's wonderful for the community. So thank you so much. And if I could, real quick, um, and, and I do regret that I did not have uh, George Sidner sign his card uh, since he passed, but if you could just sign your name in my book, I would be honored. So I got a pen, and if you don't mind. I got oh, okay, all right. I guess this is good <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, just one or two words. Uh, we're going to have something really exciting within the next two weeks. We have a gentleman that's a friend of our museum. Can you hear me? That's a friend of our museum who um, is a model builder. Belongs to three national organizations, and he's building a model of the Emblem Tunnel Cutter Ship that we're going to be putting on display within the next couple of weeks in our museum. It's, I'm excited to see it. It's going to be uh, 40 inches long, okay. 
So we'll have to find a suitable spot for it. Hopefully with the commissioners, they'll, they'll, they'll help us out here. Because the things keep coming and coming and coming. Just, just today, from Joe Crawford, who's officiated more NBA final games, we're in the NBA final season now than any other basketball official in the, in the, in the world. Uh, he, he gave us an official score report. And this is Delaware County. It's a great Delaware County story. Gave us an official score report from 2010 when Joe Crawford, Mike Callahan, and Ed Malloy, Ed Malloy were the three officials. Now, what makes this exciting for Delaware County people is that they all went to a Delaware County high school. All three NBA final <laughs> officials went to uh, Cardinal O'Hara, and it's, I don't, it's never been done bef before, and I don't think it'll ever be done after. So that, that's two exciting things that we have to look forward to. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you, really appreciate it. There Thank you go. You. Thank you. Thank you all. Do we have any public comment? Seeing none, I'll move to the consent agenda. Do we have any public comment on any items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, are there any items on the, on the consent agenda that the commissioners would like to pull? Hearing none, I will move for the entirety of the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. Consent agenda passes unanimously. Um, moving to item 3A, resolution 2022-61, authorizing the execution of a settlement agreement with Officer Michael Grimm and the honorable discharge of Michael Grimm. I will so move. Is there a second? Second. Bill, could you give us just a little bit of color on this because it does include a personnel matter? Yes, Some sir. Um, thank you. Uh, what, what this agreement uh, offers uh, both the township and Officer Grimm uh, is the opportunity to uh, honorably discharge um, the officer for a work-related injury. Um, the township, the officer, and the FOP have been working together um, since the injury to try to return Officer Grimm to full status. Uh, it is likely at this point that that will not occur. Um, and as a result, and the opportunity that the township has tonight to replace officers, um, the opportunity exists for the board to separate agreement with Officer Grimm uh, and vacate that position to be filled uh, with agenda item B, if possible. Is there any commissioner comment? Is there any staff comment? Is there any public comment? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Item 3B. Uh, conditional offers of employment for Radnor Township police officers filling vacant or soon to be vacant positions. I will so move. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, either Chief or Bill, either one of you, do you want to lead us in on this? I'll lead us in, and then uh, the Chief can help answer any questions uh, that the Board may have. Um, as part of the Township's hiring process, uh, there is a step at the Board level where a conditional offer of employment is approved by the Board that uh, initiates the next phase in the hiring process, which includes a couple additional steps. Uh, what's the, in front of the Board tonight, we have two uh, immediately vacant positions, uh, but an off opportunity to hire our top three candidates. Um, so what we are asking the board tonight is for um, conditional offer, approval of a conditional offers of employment for three officers, understanding that uh, the third is a, a position that is expected to become vacant uh, in the foreseeable future. Um, as we discussed 
the efficiencies surrounding bringing all three officers on at the same time uh, is significant when it comes to the field training uh, program that every new Radnor officer is required to go through. Um, that training program uh, is a significant lift, both in terms of time and resources, not just for the, the new officers, but for the existing officers that are um, uh, br bringing the new officers along through the program. Uh, Chris can go into a lot more detail if the board would like, um, but everything from you know, being on shift, uh, you know, what you're doing on shift, you know, the, the firearms training, other, you know, all of the departmental policies that need to be reviewed and signed off on, um, which is ex uh, very, very extensive. Um, uh, at the same time, so hiring all three at the same time brings, uh, has the, we realize the efficiencies associated with that. And then secondarily, uh, we have the opportunity to hire the top three candidates in the most recent um, testing list. Um, and that opportunity, as we understand it, if, if we don't um, we don't have if we don't hire all three now, understandably, when the third position becomes open, whenever that may be, uh, it's expected that um, you know more officers will be off the top of our list, and at that point we're hiring. Um, further down the list. So we wanted to present the opportunity to hire our top three uh, at the same time. Thank you very much. Um, is there any commissioner comment on this? I have a few questions. Sure. Um, is this budgeted, these three? Is that in the budget or are we? So the two positions that we're filling immediately are, are certainly budgeted because we always um, assume full staffing. Uh, the third, the third uh, position would be an additional cost in the range of you know, 30 to 40,000. Um, and that cost is the time period that the new officer is on board uh, while the, um, the other officer that we expect uh, will be retiring uh, is still on board as well. So, um, that part of it is not budgeted. Um, okay, so yeah. thirty, so thirty or forty thousand on. So you'd hire all three, just so they're kind of coming in as a group or a class, for lack of a better term. Yep. Um, so that thirty or forty thousand that's going to overlap with the um, officer that w may soon retire, is that including benefits and including? Uh, every it's so it's including so it's thirty or forty thousand out the door. Yeah, that's fully loaded, and it would it, that encompasses the time of hiring through uh, January twenty twenty three when it's expected um, we are going to have another vacancy in the department okay. through retirement. And then just one last question: the recruits that we're hiring are they directly out of the police academy, or are they uh, looking for um, you know were they at another? township uh, and looking to change what's their seniority uh, I will let uh, the chief answer that uh, with sure. a little he's got a little bit more detail on that uh, commissioner the three candidates we have are all currently police officers um, which is a nice factor for us because we're able to investigate their record and follow up with their supervisors um, so each of them comes from a different one from being police officers. One of them is from 2021, 2017, and 2020. So based on the fact that they have more experience, are we paying them more, and has that been budgeted? So um, under our collective bargaining agreement with the FOP, all the officers come in at the same level based on um, or at the rate of pay stipulated in that agreement. So no. Uh, so no, in terms of they don't get paid differently, Yes, in terms of it's all budgeted based on those numbers. Okay, so they're com they're not coming in as recruits right out of the academy, are they? No, and they are all uh, officers uh, in other municipalities. But their pay is in co as is in commensurate with recruits coming right out from the academy, correct? Yeah, their their pay will be it, it's stipulated within the the collective bargaining agreement. And there's money in the budget to pay for for all that. Okay. Yes. Uh, it, well, I, I, not to get too down in the detail, but. When an existing officer leaves uh, and is replaced with a new one, there is a short period of savings as the new officer does not make the same rate of pay yet as the officer who's leaving. 
And um, I'll just have a follow-up question on that. Um, are you factoring in and the additional amount that you've indicated it will cost to hire early, for the lack of a better term, to have um, an overlap with the retiring officer? Isn't the pay differential quite different between an incoming um, new to the career officer and a retiring officer? Is that factored into kind of the overage for this couple of months that you're thinking about? It is. Um, and from the standpoint of the existing officer's rate of pay is what it was going to be no matter what and is part of what we budgeted for this year, the additional cost is the new hire at their uh, lower new hire rate. along with all of the other costs, uh, including benefits. Any other questions? Yep. So, so Bill, and I, or Chief, um, you talked about three people identified. What, what gives you the assurance that those three are, I mean, have you received a informal acceptance? Like, what, what, makes you, what gives you the confidence to know that these three will accept a conditional offer? <laughs> Obviously, they could decline, Commissioner, if something else came along. Uh, these officers went through an extensive testing, rigorous physical, written, um, and very thorough background. Um, we have extensive files from their background. They allowed us to meet their families, um, work through all the different jobs that they have, and follow up with all those people. So it's a real commitment to this department and this township. So, and then they just recently had an interview with the township manager where they all expressed uh, continuing on in the process. As you are aware, this is a conditional offer. They must pass a medical and psychological. So we do have two things, two verification steps to go through prior to the final offer. So, so are we offering, so is it these three people or if one does not make the final cut? So are we, are we hiring, hiring three regardless or are, is it just the top three? If any one of the top three decline our offer, uh, we will hire the other two uh, and then come back to the board. Okay. I, that's, yeah, I appreciate that route. Yeah. Any other commissioner comment? Do we have public comment? I apologize uh, that I was late. Did we already move this? And second? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, sorry. Moving on to um, item 3C, which is resolution 2022-56, uh, establishing a subcommittee of the Board of Commissioners to review the existing ward electoral districts within Ranner Township in accordance with the municipal reapportionment act. Um, can I get a, a motion so moved. and a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll just say something to this and then um, Mr. White, I'll hand it to you, if that's okay. Do you want to lead us in? Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm happy to give it a shot. Well, I'm going to start out by saying I'm super excited about this. Uh, this is our redistricting oh, okay. effort um, launching with this establishment of a subcommittee of the board, um, it will be chaired by Jack Larkin, and we have Maggie Myers and Jake Abel as the um, uh, to round out that committee. And I have great faith in all three of you to help guide us as we start this really important process. Mr. White, did I miss anything? No, just uh, I, I would add that from the administrative perspective, we'll have um, in front of the entire board the opportunity to. to uh, purchase the software that will be necessary from the the logistical or the the, the, the mapping side of um, this process. That software is coming from Esri, which is a, a, a well-known GIS um, and software provider. That software will include, um, you know, census data. Um, it, it'll include any kind of data that is publicly available. Um, at our disposal or at the committee's disposal as you go through the, um, you know, the decision making. And this um, committee will be charged with um, helping us plan out 
who our advisors will be in this process, what the community engagement um, will look like throughout this process. And again, very excited to get started. And thank you to the three commissioners who have agreed to uh, lead us through. Um, do I have any commissioner comment? I, I just have a, a, co a couple of questions. So I'm, you know, in looking at the resolution, I'm very excited about this also. And um, thank you to those who are going to be serving. Um, the timeline for this, so I see that you want to make recommendations uh, on or before December 1st. As you guys build this out, or are, and we're, I'm guessing that we're going to have a consultant help us with the process. Um, so will there be, um, have you guys set aside or, or thought how much time you'll allow for public comment on the plan? So once the plan is finished, will there be a period of public comment prior to the recommendations to the board, or will that happen after it's presented to the board? I don't know. Would you like me to answer that? Who, whoever. I'm asking anyone. <laughs> okay. Um, just uh, since I haven't been here for a while, I'm Peter Nelson. I'm here on um, behalf of John. I'm a partner of John's. Um, the putting together a committee is just the first step in actually a very long process. Um, once the committee comes up with recommendations, it's going to come in front of you, the Board of Commissioners, to decide. Um, you know, which recommendation, you know, I, I assume there are going to be multiple different maps that are going to be provided to you. This is what happened the last time uh, Radnor redistricted. And the uh, Board of Commissioners will have to decide which map they want, which redistricting that they want. Once that is done, we, the township then has to adopt an ordinance which is going to have to go through all the same steps as any ordinance. So you're going to have a public hearing on that ordinance, too. Um, the adoption of what map you take is going to be at a public ordinance. The, if you look at the, uh, the resolution, the meeting of the committee is going to be public meetings, so the public can be part of that. Um, after the ordinance is adopted, that is then sent to the Board of Elections in the county. There's a, uh, several steps the County Board of Elections has to take. Those are all open to the public. It ends up going in front of a judge in the Court of Common Pleas at an open hearing that is also open to the public. Um, so there's multiple steps throughout this process that the, uh, the public will be able to join in. The first of which, at the very beginning, is each meeting of this committee, the public will be available and can you know, chime in on their thoughts on the committee's work from the get-go. So then the date of honor before December 1st, that's really where kind of that whole process that you just mentioned kind of kicks off. So the maps will come to the commissioners and then that whole process, or do we want to have all that done before December 1st? Um, I th not being <laughs> privy to the conversation, I'm assuming that date of December 1st is when the, uh, the recommendations are being brought before the Board of Commissioners for you to decide what maps to, to do. Once you decide, once you pick on a map, uh, the ordinance will probably be all re ready. We just have to attach that map to it, advertise it, enact it. You know, that will take probably a month, a month and a half, depending on meeting schedule. Then it goes to the Board of Elections. Um, and so, then it's out of our hands time-wise. I suspect the redistricting won't be in time for the primary. Maybe if the Board of Elections does it quickly enough, yes, you'll be redistricted for the primary. I d obviously, you should be redistricted by the general election in November. But that's one of the things you need to keep in, keep in mind is... So can you run with one set of with one map in the primary and then switch it in the Actually, general? Actually, yeah, as I was speaking, I was thinking that's not going to work. No, you can't. <clears throat> so I think we, <clears throat> the aim is to get everything to the Board of Elections in time for the primary to, uh, to be run under the new map and not the old. And that's all fine. My main concern is just, is it setting a false expectation for people to think everything will be done by December 1st? And I'm just wondering if that, you, we want to change that date or push it back or or at least clarify that, you know, this is the recommendations that will you know, be come before us on December 1st, and then there's still another process, or at least attach what that process is so that people know and they don't feel 
like, oh, it's something that's supposed to be done December 1st when it may not be? Yeah, no, I can appreciate that. I think that when we were putting this together that the December 1st deadline was to allow the subcommittee to do its initial work with a very generous lead. Um, so I would imagine knowing um, who's on that committee, it will be done faster. Um, but this is, uh, are we hiring a consultant? What does community engagement look like? And what is the plan to move forward? Um, I didn't read this when I got it, that like the map was decided by December, 20, by December 1st, 2022. So if there's some clarification language that you would like to um, suggest, I'm open to hearing an amendment. We could um, simply, and I'll just throw this out for conversation, I'm not calling for an amendment, but it could read number five, the subcommittee shall make recommendations on uh, consultant and plan to the full board of commissioners on or before. I, I like I, that. I, okay. Yeah, I think that, I just don't want people to think we were saying we're gonna have it done by December 1st. No, I, I'm reading like it now with your, um, hearing you say that and I do believe it's confusing so I will make a motion to amend to just insert the subcommittee shall make recommendations on consultant and redistricting engagement plan how's that sound uh, to the full board of commissioners on or before December 1st 2022 do I have a second second, second that okay I'm gonna call the vote on the amendment uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Great. Uh, any further discussion as amended from commissioners? Uh, is there public comment? Okay, I will call the vote on the resolution 2022 56 as amended. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank you so much. Okay, the next item is resolution 2022-57, authorizing approval of the purchase of playground servicing, uh, sunshades, play structure, roofing, and installation at Enke Park Playground from George Eli Associates Incorporated in the amount of $128,962 to be funded from the Park Impact Fund. Do I hear a motion and a second? Second. Ms. Cohen, is this you? It is, yes, Madam President. So this is a project that uh, started with review back in January by the Parks and Recreation Board. Um, as the resolution indicates, uh, this project would be funded out of the Park Impact Fund, um, which as you probably know, is uh, part of the Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance, um, basically that designates the provision of land or, free, or fees in lieu of from the impact that occurs with development that goes on. So this is something that actually had some discussion um, when we had uh, budget discussions back in November and December uh, with regards to alternatives to capital funding for park improvement projects. So there was a balance of funds that have been allocated uh, to that fund over the last several years as a result of development, um, leaving the opportunity, of course, to fund projects uh, that are parks and recreation related. And so in January, the Parks and Recreation Board took a close look at this and an extensive list of projects. So they looked at our entire capital plan um, and we spent January, February, March, and April meetings uh, really digressing through those to a large extent. And as a result, um, it was recommended that this project really rose to the top as being one that's, that's eminent due to the safety uh, that does exist in the current, in the current uh, playground with regards to the deterioration that's occurring uh, with the surfacing. So that is definitely the main portion of this project. And then ancillary safety, of course, to that is the opportunity to install sunshades, uh, which is another stop, uh, topic that has been got, has gotten a lot of discussion publicly over the last several months with residents coming forward, um, looking for respite, of course, for sun. And uh, most recently, of course, because of rain, of course, they would protect within a rain situation too, as we've seen. Um, and then this also presented an opportunity to have a roofing structure of some sort installed onto the play, onto the play area, the main play area, similar to what you see over at Clemacrone, where we have five roofing structures over, the, over that playground. 
Um, so this is a project that really, uh, like I said, it, it rose to the top, especially with regards to safety um, that it offers. It's a highly utilized area here at the township building. I think everyone sees it when they drive in. It's a very popular area, uh, being at the ballpark here at Anki, uh, and certainly a, a project that had gotten a lot of support by our Parks and Recreation Board. Uh, so they did, they did pass the vote unanimously, six to, six to zero. <coughs> And uh, tonight, uh, we're respectfully requesting approval of this project. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, commissioner comment on this project? Maggie? Yep. <clears throat> Tammy, when, when was that park initially renovated? It was renovated back in uh, 2014. 2014. Um, and, and we didn't have any discussion during the budget cycle in November, December that this was going to be a priority to use the, um, um, the, uh, the, the park impact fund, correct? There was discussion in November and December during the budget process um, when the finance department and Mr. White had, had presented the budget and funding strategies for capital uh, related projects with regards to parks and facilities. Um, and although this project wasn't called out specifically, uh, it was called out that the, the Parks and Recreation Board would look at all of the capital projects um, that are outlined with regards to our parks and facilities, which is a very long list, um, and then start to work through the process of potentially funding those projects in January. Um, and as a matter of fact, as part of their vote, whenever they passed um, their motion, the remaining funds that would be left over within the park impact fund, they were very steadfast in wanting to designate that those be applied to Odorisio Park for improvement project, uh, projects that we know are needed there. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, th th this could be a, I mean, it, park improvements are always great. Um, it, it's hard for me to justify renovating a park for a second time when we have a park that has, hasn't been touched in 30 years. Um, so, I mean, this $128,000, I mean, those neighbors would love to see it go in Odorisio as, as well as the other additional funds that are, that are in that fund. Um, and it's not just a neighborhood park, that, that's a community park. You know, everyone goes there to sled, baseball, soccer, um, go into the woods. Uh, so while, while this is worthwhile, you know, I, 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 I just can't justify voting in favor of it when I know there's a park that is in desperate need that was overlooked again. And I'm sure the neighbors are gonna feel the same way when they, when they hear that you know, another 128,000 is going into another park and not theirs. Well, I, I think just in, in my judgment, I think in the, the, the most presiding factor of this is that there is an eminent safety hazard that exists right now out at Anki Park. Um, it was, uh, there was a series of corrections that were made um, by the vendor. Um, unfortunately, during COVID, the vendors and the installers uh, went out of business and retired. Um, I know we worked through John Rice's office to uh, seek damages um, beyond the warranty where we were outside of, um, and unfortunately, we were not able to make any headway um, in doing so. And now there's, there's definitely an exposure situation that sits there. So although I, I firmly agree with you about Odorisio, um, I think just given the safety situation that exists at Enki and the popularity of the park and the amount of time that it's used, um, it's definitely a vital project. And, and that may be the case. Um, I, I think one can argue not touching a playground in 30 years also presents some safety issues. Not to mention, if you drove by the, the, uh, the park on Saturday morning, you know, the whole um, bottom parking lot was flooded out, so not even able to use. Um, I mean, we can go back and forth all day on on what's, you know, what's worthy projects, a park that hasn't been touched in 40 years or one that was renovated in 2014, um, I, I know where I would stand on that. There's also a significant balance that will, that will remain in this fund that is going to be committed 100% to Odorisio, at least in the recommendation of the Parks and Recreation Board. Obviously, ultimately, the Board of Commissioners will, will have that vote and that decision. Um, and I know that process starts um, more fervently this Thursday where we have a public meeting and a town hall meeting with the residents to start that planning process with our Parks and Recreation Board at the RTCA. And, and this wouldn't be the first time that the neighbors heard you're on the list. So um, it really doesn't mean anything till that 
that vote's passed and that money's allocated. Tammy, thank you so much for answering the question before I got to ask it. Um, I was going to ask about where is Odorizio on the list, and so thanks for answering that question. And I'd like to um, say that no, you know, Enki is a community park. It's not just a neighborhood park. Um, you know, it's used by everyone. There's a skateboarding park there. Um, you know, it is in disrepair. It definitely needs resurfacing. And the sunshade will be very welcomed. And when, when will that be installed if this is passed? Uh, the project, uh, we're hoping that it will start in September or October. Um, the playground surfacing does require the temperatures be moderate and not excessively hot. Um, although we won't be able to predict what will happen in September, you know, given our climate tre trends, but that's the attempt is to get it done once the, the bulk of the heat of the summer is over. Um, and then installing the shades, um, you know, with this project, you know, is, is definitely something that it's a first time project for us. I know the Parks Board uh, was adamant that this would be a pilot so that we could see how sun shades will, will perform for us. We know there's some maintenance that will go along with their installation uh, and having them there. Um, but knowing that there, there's some definite benefits that, that go along with that as well. So, you know, again, the, the safety definitely is, is the key. And uh, I don't want to speak for all the members of the Parks and Recreation Board, but they are very devoted to Odorisio Park, um, as is the administration, and that being the next project that we're working very intently on. Other commissioners? Yeah, just uh, real quick. Tammy, I know that you've worked really hard on this, um, and thank you for that, um, and as well as the Parks and Rec Board. I've been to many meetings where you've been pulled aside uh, uh, outside the meeting, outside of the recording or during the recording, and uh, and um, this is, uh, we definitely need to make those improvements to the park. Uh, the sun shades, um, we're, this is one of two. Um, so I guess we're looking still at Clem Crone being the next, correct? Um, well, I think the goal is to see how the sunshades perform yes. at Enki, mm -hmm. um, if, because mm -hmm. keep in mind at Clem Crone, there are five roofing structures that do exist there. Okay. And just real quick, I, I want to touch on um, uh, Commissioner Abel's point about Odorisio. It's, it's beyond upsetting when you go there, and I think you know my feelings about that. Um, the issue that I have is if if we didn't if we move this money this 125 to Odorisio, we would still piecemeal the project, and that was the issue that we spoke about or I spoke about or I noticed when we looked about um, the basketball, what to do with the basketball court, um, and then basically we're going to wind up doing things twice and um, unfortunately. Uh, uh, costing the taxpayers uh, m maybe a little bit more money, um, but I am under the, um, you know, I'm not under, not, not under the impression because odorisio has got to get fixed, and it's got to get fixed soon, that it really is in the next budget that we come up with a plan, a plan as big as um, Fenimore Woods, and fix Odorisio. And if we could do it all at once and not piecemeal it, where we only had enough money for this part of the project, and it's just an ongoing project, um, that's what I would like to see. Unfortunately, um, as we do that, um, the park may be shut down. Uh, a lot of it may be shut down. But um, to your point, um, Odorisio should be next. It should be. if whatever the next bond is or whatever the next budgeting cycle is, I would really like to see um, that be first and foremost um, where it can get everything that it needs. If it's stormwater, if it's moving the basketball courts uh, near the playground, if it's putting new, a new bathroom or comfort station in, it needs a whole host of, um, of uh, amenities to be redone. So, that's my point. I will be voting for this. Uh, Tammy, thank you again to the board, the Parks and Rec board. Thank you. Uh, but let's keep Odorisio on the front burner. Thanks. Any other comments from commissioners? Is there any public comment?
I'm putting tomatoes in and I can barely move. Sarah Pilling, 29 Garrett Avenue. I've now lived in Garrett Hill for 40 years. And every day I pass Macron either in automobile or w walking because that's my form of exercise these days. I'm not quite sure why I understand the difference between a community and a neighborhood park. But what I've noticed about Garrett Hill is more and more and more young people are moving into Garrett Hill as many houses have turned over. So almost every day I see moms and dads pushing strollers or little tykes on, tr on tricycles or little kids on bicycles. Either the parents are pushing them or the family is walking. And I know this issue of uh, canopies came up last summer because by May the little kids could not play on the playground because it was so hot. So it's a concern I have that why are you waiting till October when we have no idea what this summer is going to be like but seeing as every summer since 2012 has been hotter than the year before. So I I don't want to say no to Enki, but I'm disappointed that this isn't being addressed at Macron, because you can't get in that parking lot or in that park on a Saturday. It is so full of parents and little kids. I'm not quite sure where they're all coming from, but it is amazing, and I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, go ahead. Andy. I want to correct a statement. I meant to say that Enki is a community park, not a neighborhood park. And I say that because I've spent a lot of time at Enki. And um, when I'm there, I ask, well, I was there, you know, campaigning. So I did a lot of campaigning there. I held some events. And I can't tell you the amount of people that were at that park that weren't even from Radnor. They came because they just knew it was a great park to be at. And I'm sure it's the same for Clem McCrone. Um, that's also a very popular spot. I'd agree with you, Sarah. Um, but I guess, you know, to Tammy's point, you have to have a test pilot, right? And this park needs to be resurfaced. So why not start there? And I guess that's your, how you came up with this plan, Tammy? It is. Um, so, like, if I may, to um, just to jump in also, the, the decision to wait until September really is, comes from... The, the ordering time and the ship time and all of that. I mean, it's realistic to think that the equipment probably wouldn't even be ready and delivered until really July, August anyways at this point. There's just so many variables. And then the opportunity to line up the, um, the installer is another piece. Um, you know, obviously that's something, you know, upon it being approved, we're gonna work on very, very quickly. But, you know, there's definitely a timeline there. So knowing that our hottest months obviously are usually July, August, September, it's not conducive to the time and when uh, in which to do the pour as well, because the surface is a poured in place surface. It has to be heated and liquefied and then it's poured and then it becomes a solid. Um, and if the temperatures aren't right when that's done, that's potentially what could lead to the issue and potentially what led to the issue prior, um, which is something we did a lot of investigation into. So from a timeline perspective, um, that was the goal there. And then as far as the sunshades go, I mean, this is our first opportunity in working with sunshades. I've done a lot of research on them. I've gotten a lot of mixed reviews about whether or not they can withstand wind loads or snow loads during the winter months. I have some towns that I've talked to where they leave them up all winter and they've worked fine and they still maintain a 10 year, 15 year lifespan. And there's others that I've talked to and maybe it's just depends on location or depends on you know what occurred you know in said season. Um, where they haven't weathered as well. So that's where this is, is kind of a little bit of an experiment for us. Um, you know, we've done research on the manufacturer, trying to go with, you know, the right one that has, you know, the strongest nylon and can withstand the highest wind loads and things like that. Um, but it, to some degree, it's definitely going to be a learning curve for us and something I think we're excited to learn about. And if it is something that is positive and, and works for everyone, we would start to extend it to future playgrounds future playgrounds or existing playgrounds where they can definitely benefit. Thank you. Uh, any other public comment? I'm not seeing any. I will call the vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? 
The motion passes. Moving on to ordinance 2022-05. Uh, this is up for adoption. The general obligation bonds not to exceed $12,985,000 bank qualified for stormwater infra uh, infrastructure improvement projects. May I hear a motion? So moved. And Seconded. a second. Thank you. Um, Bob? Madam President, I can Thank take this. Tate. Thank you. Uh, with your approval tonight, um, the administration is looking forward to working with our outside professionals and uh, getting the necessary paperwork filed and our information and exchange with Moody's, uh, having that process completed. And um, eagerly looking forward to issuing general obligation bonds to finance the stormwater projects that were uh, presented to you at our previous meeting and begin the process um, of stormwater mitigation and uh, improvement projects throughout the township. Um, we'll be working with uh, Suzanne Mays of Cozen O'Connor um, and Dan Kozloff of PFM. And with us here tonight is um, Michael Wolf of Benning and Scattergood, uh, the firm that does the underwriting for the bonds. Uh, so if there's any particular questions I'm happy to answer, as well as Mr. Wolf, if there's any particular detailed questions that you might have. I just, I'll start off uh, uh, with a question about timing. So if we approve this tonight, when do we get the money? <laughs> Mr. Wolf is on top of that one very much. <laughs> Good evening, Michael Wolf from Benning and Scattergood. This is my 14th bond issue for Radnor. Very exciting. This one's been a long time coming, if you remember back to the Stormwater Advisory Committee days. But um, uh, we get our reaffirmation, I would say, of our rating on Wednesday morning, and we hope to market the bonds Monday or Tuesday, market permitting, um, which would lock in the interest rates when um, the township signs a, a signature page the afternoon the bonds are sold and we have tentatively scheduled settlement which is when you get the money for june the 6th it takes about a month <clears throat> a little more uh, it'll be 10 million dollars a little less the ordinance provides for uh, almost 13 million dollars and that's a necessary um, thing that I've explained a few times, but I'm willing to explain it again. We have to put a cushion on each one of the maturities to, to take into account any permutations and combinations of the offers made by the bond buyers. We don't know which maturities have to move. It may only be one, but we have to put the uh, cushion on each one of 30. If you put 100,000 on each one of 30, you get 3 million uh, advertised. But because this issue will be bank qualified, it will be under 10. Can I just ask one question? I'm sorry, Commissioner Moroni. I didn't, I didn't mean to Please. interrupt. Nope, I was going um, to So we're question. not going to be able to get all these projects done, these 12, really, I'm going to round it up to $13 million at once. $10 million is all you're going to get. Is we're going to get $10 million. Gonna, it says not to exceed. Right. 13 it's, but we're only going to get 10 all right or so let's, or else it won't sure, be that qualified sure um so that being said where is that money going to be parked and that may be a question more for bob tate as these projects are going to go because if we're going to be paying what four or five percent we're looking at four hundred thousand dollars a year in debt service for these bonds whether we're using this money or not so the projects that can't be done today, that may be done six months or a year from now or beyond, uh, because it's not a revolving a line of credit, this is an actual bond, correct, that will go on the public market. Um, you know, where, you know, what's the, um, where's that money gonna be parked and uh, what's, the, uh, what's the difference? I mean, because we're gonna be losing money as this is, Sitting, I'm just curious what that spread is going to be, or have you figured that out? Thanks. Uh, no, good question, Commissioner. Uh, the township does have existing relationships with um, 
outside firms for short-term investment or long-term investment, um, more so short-term so that it is, it is easily converted and can be made liquid and available for cash needs. Uh, Pligit is one of the more notable firms who we work with. Um, and we could, we, as we've done in the past, we've parked uh, some of our uh, other monies with that firm. And so we'll look at those options. Uh, we'll move some of that money into those accounts. And, um, but we do have in our project plan um, a likelihood of spending down close to $6 million, possibly by the end of the year, with the projects that are currently shovel ready and have been awarded. Okay, so, so, um, okay. so if it's $6 million, then I'll just say um, $6 million, so we'll still be sitting on $4 million that's going to be in, in the bank, and I'm sure the interest rates have not caught up with the bond rates as the, pardon me, the money market rates have not caught up with the bond rates as we all know. So four times, 400, four million times, four, four and a half, five percent, we'll just split the difference and say, um, I'll just say four percent. Um, that's still $160,000 that we're going to sit uh, servicing debt that we're not going to be used. Am I correct? Is, is that, I mean, if it's not shovel ready and we're looking a year, right? That seems to be somewhat sizable. So why is this bond offering so big? And maybe the answer is interest rates are rising and you want to lock in. I don't know, but to me right now, it just seems that we're looking at 140,000 plus, give or take, um, you know, it's just, it's a salary, it's, it's, it's a lot of money. Um, how are we accounting for, for that? Well, um, there are a couple of reasons. There's, over time, our stormwater fund has, we've had the opportunity to accumulate cash. Um, and as we had previously presented, uh, there are a series of projects that we intend to fund with those cash proceeds, as well as utilize the cash proceeds to pay debt service. Um, the flip side of that is by limiting the issuance to 10 million or less, we are able to do a bank qualified bond issue. So we are able to take advantage of the, the best available rates that are out there in the market at the time. Um, and we also, we were discussing this a little more than a year ago, and um, we had explored a doing some other types of short-term financing, which uh, that did not pan out. There was no market for that short-term financing. So we did wait as long as possible to minimize the amount of time we would be sitting on our bond proceeds. And, um, and as it stands, we have, we have more than one. We have several projects, shovel-ready, and we'll be utilizing those funds um, within a, a, probably within a year to a year and a half. And uh, so, which I think, you know, looking, uh, th that's, that's fairly quick for projects of this size and for money of that magnitude. Um, so on the flip side, the money that we are sitting on, we'll do the best we can to maximize the investment uh, while we're sitting on those funds waiting to disperse them. So um, a couple more questions. The, do we have an exit plan for this stormwater fund? Um, I mean, no one wants to pay stormwater fees indefinitely in the sense of what's the out? Because this is, this, is this is how I see it. And Bill, we had this talk. We had a talk about it, and you sent me some stuff. I see that the stormwater fund is basically now going to go fund smaller projects. If we get a million, if we bring in a million dollars a year in revenues, correct? Is that give or take? Okay. So we're going to spend right now five hundred thousand of that million in debt service. Okay, and then the other five hundred thousand in smaller projects. That's kind of the gist that I got. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm off by a little bit. The longer term goal, and then in a couple years, we may go back and get new bonds to fund stuff. So eventually, we're going to obviously have to keep raising our rates to fund these stormwater. So I just look at this now as a pit or as a fund 
of just money that is going to go fund this stuff with no real exit strategy to how do we pay it off? How do we get out of this? It's just going to be revolving debt, basically. Um, that's really how I see it, that the more, the more money that we can um, float, in theory, the, the more money um, we're going to do it, and we'll pay the, the smaller projects. So if in a couple years, um, we, you know, we have um, another $5 million in, in funding, that's going to increase the amount of debt service from this fund. I just, is there an out? Is there a way that we're going to end it? And then on top of that, we're also going to have to put a sinking fund in, correct, to pay the principal off. Am I correct on that? Uh, the, <clears throat> the revenue generated within the fund will serve as the sinking fund as, as you're describing it. So the, rev the annual revenue in the fund will pay for the, the totality of the debt service. Okay, so, so there the won't in be a separate sinking so fund. So if the interest rate is 4%, let's just say that's four million, that's $400,000 a year, and then what do you amortize? This is a 30-year bond at $10 million. So what is that? Three, three hundred thousand. What is it? Three hundred thousand a year on top of that that we're going to have to put to debt service, right? It's a it's a ten year bond. It's a ten. I'm sorry. It's a thirty year bond at ten million dollars. If you amortize just the principal divided by thirty, that's three hundred thousand. So now you have four hundred thousand in debt service and three hundred thousand in bond. Re okay. Then then explain the math to me. It's like a mortgage. Sure. Mm -hmm. it start, it's level payments, like a mortgage. Okay. So it starts out with small principal, big interest, and you work your way, work your way, until at the end you're paying very little principal, I'm sorry, very little interest and big principal. The level payment at today's rates is about $565,000 to both amortize the principal and pay the interest over okay. the entire term. So it's five, okay. So I can't do it in my head either. No, 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 that's fine. I, I didn't know if it was a straight... If you just break it. So you're looking now, instead of 5%, you're looking closer to 6% that we're paying? That right we're now, the rate is 4%. The rate in the market okay. today is but, but it's it almost 4% for 30 years. Okay. That sounds bad compared to the no, it's still pretty good. crazy low rates of the last two years. But now we're back to where we were exactly three years ago. No, no, no. The, so the, we missed the, a dip. Yeah, no, I don't, the, the rate is fine, but how much, how much are you going to have to pay? Uh, a year to, to, to pay the debt service, to pay it all off. It's, you're saying- For This bond issue- It's gonna be- $565,000 okay. a year. So it's 565,000 a year yeah. on top of, so it's only gonna leave uh, you, you four and change a little bit, four, four and a quarter, a little bit more, a little bit less right. for- which, which will be for the short-term projects. Got but it. there's also- Cash on hand for those short-term projects. Well, those cash, the, the cash on cash on hand is that a tax? Is that coming from the general fund, or is that coming from the That's no. money accumulated in this? No, this is dorm <clears throat> fund. Okay. Yeah, the the plan as it's as it's been presented a couple times uh, includes uh, it it. So first of all, please let 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 me be perfectly clear. This is all housed within the stormwater fund. There is no outside funding from the general fund, from real estate taxes, from business taxes, from any other fee other than the stormwater fee. Um, the sanitary sewer rent is housed in a completely separate fund. This is entirely um, housed and accounted for uh, by the yeah. stormwater fee. So, um, within that fund, as we've forecasted in the plan, uh, and as Mr. Tate pointed out earlier tonight, um, the fund has uh, over $4 million in it. What we have uh, in front of us today that we're uh, looking forward to moving forward with is $20 million and change in various projects, um, 10 million of which will be funded through the bond issue that's on this agenda specifically. Um, the balance of those either in Future bond issues, which we have forecasted right now, is roughly four million, and that's scheduled for two or three years down the road. Uh, what is bridging the gap from our million-dollar annual revenue to um, these different costs that we're talking about is the four million dollars in the fund, which is entirely 
stormwater fee proceeds from prior years that have built up over time. So in our discussions with the board, um, rather than raising the fee and having $4 million sitting in the fund, uh, the direction from the board was, and it seems most prudent to utilize as much of that cash as possible to prevent immediate fee increases and push those further down the road and use that money to install projects, help pay off this debt service, and uh, in essence, buy time. Uh, those, the costs associated with this $10 million, uh, the, the annual level debt service has been built into that forecast. Um, the anticipated increase in debt service from the additional borrowing that's forecasted for three or ish years down the road, that's built into the forecast as well as what uh, the rate increases might look like um, when that time comes, again, five, six years down the road in the forecast. Um, just quickly to address the, the question of end game, um, I think what, and, and this, this was, the, our prior discussion on Odorisio presents the same problem as we had for stormwater for all the years that the township's been in existence is uh, a lack of a consistent revenue stream needed to fund capital projects. So we are in that predicament when it comes to our parks and our general infrastructure, um, sidewalks, streets, uh, parks, uh, facilities that we own and operate. Um, so what was established a number of years ago by the Board of Commissioners was a, a dedicated funding stream to address stormwater. So I guess the, the question or the answer to the question of the end game on the stormwater fee is uh, when the township's no longer responsible for managing stormwater, either through its existing or future infrastructure, then the fee won't be necessary. But without that fee, we don't have revenue to address that particular element of our capital program. Um, and it as a result then falls in line with all the other capital items that that we arm wrestle over projects for. And, and they're always difficult discussions or, and difficult decisions uh, when it's such a finite amount of money. Uh, and I, I, I'd like to think ultimately that's why the commissioner is elected to establish a separate fee that is housed outside of our taxes and our sanitary sewer to address this one specific element of what we have to manage. Yeah. I'll just one more quick comment and then I'll end. Um, so first of all, um, uh, Bill, I never said anything about the sewer system at all. So uh, uh, just to get that out. Um, so basically that this is going to go, this fund is going to go into perpetuity and it's just going to constantly be a fund that's going to amass and be debt or a drain um, on the township. And that's fine. I get it. Um, we, we need to fix stormwater. Um, so, but without um, coming up and you could say uh, with a comprehensive plan on, on, you know, some of these culverts, I understand. I spoke with Steve. I get it. They're, they're well past their life. There's never stormwater in there to begin with. But the more we build, um, the more issues we're going to have. And none of that was addressed with this bond. It's just kind of it's, it's fixing things. Um, maybe it's not putting a Band-Aid, it's fixing things. But without um, knowing, um, you know, we're spending millions and millions of dollars without a plan uh, moving forward. I'm just looking at the future. I'm not trying to look backwards. And I just, again, I don't see an, uh, an end game. It's in perpetuity. And I didn't see a, a plan to help quell stormwater in these major, major events that we have. And you're not going to stop all of them. But without uh, dealing with, um, uh, with it uh, better, um, we're going to keep having these problems. So I'm going to stop there. I'll be voting no on this. But those are my thoughts. Thank you. And thank you, Bill and Bob, uh, and you, sir, for your, uh, your, your, your explanations. I do appreciate it. Thank sir, you. Can I comment? Um, so uh, I will be voting yes on this tonight, and I want to thank um, our staff, uh, Bill, under Bill's leadership, and Bob, um, and Steve Norsini, for the plan that we do have. There is quite a plan. Uh, Bill, you are right. There is over $25 million in projects on this plan. 
Um, it is timed out. We've got award dates. We know exactly when we will be uh, spending the money, I guess, to the best of our knowledge. You know, there are some things like the West Wayne Preserve where some of it, it our hands are tied by the state, um, and hopefully, you know, that will progress through and we'll be able to spend that money, which I think is a lot of the balance of what Commissioner Fari is referring to is kind of, you know, the four million that'll be sitting there, but that's money for the West Wayne Preserve project. So hopefully that will um, come through as well as a lot of the grants that Melissa has um, outstanding. So that will be exciting. Um, with regards to the stormwater fee, I think that the prior board that put that in place certainly were, were visionary and also recognized that there is, you know, a significant stormwater issue in this township that people are clamoring for us to be able to solve. And we just don't have the money to solve it. Um, when you have $25 million in projects, that is a huge amount of money. It's been a long list of things that we need to do that we've been putting off for a long time um, because we don't have we don't have the funds in or to do these things. So, the, for instance, the project that's going to really help make a difference for our firehouse, uh, for our element, or for our middle school, uh, for the residents over in South Wayne, um, for our library to protect. Uh, so not only to solve a flooding problem, but to also protect very valuable um, assets of the township. So whether it's the school district or uh, the township and the library and our firehouse, you know, those are, those are invaluable assets and we need to protect them. And that project to do that is going to cost us almost five million, over five, $5 million to do. We just didn't have the money. So... The stormwater fund will allow us to uh, do projects like that, allow us to do smaller projects. And the nice thing about the fee is that everyone contributes to it. So it's not just the residents, it's also all the nonprofits that we can't, uh, you know, that don't contribute property taxes and things like that. So it is all of those groups. So everyone is contributing. Um, it is going to make a difference in uh, across the township. The projects are uh, over the next, I don't know how many years. So we've got ones that are going, all, we've got it planned all the way out to, it looks like, Q2 of 2027. So there are projects that are going to roll out and uh, they, we know exactly where the money is going to come from. We know exactly how we're going to fund them. We have a priority list of what needs to happen um, to be impactful and to make sure we're also addressing a lot of the, the infrastructure that is aging and falling apart. So um, I will be supporting this bond as I think it's an intricate part of that this plan. Um, it helps drive this plan and makes it possible for us to also spend for the smaller projects out of the stormwater fund. And I think it's going to make a, a significant impact on many, many people across this township who have been looking for relief. Um, Commissioner Farhi, your point about the comprehensive plan, yes, um, that is something that we need to do and we need to uh, plan for moving forward, knowing the mistakes that have been made in the past that we can correct. Um, so I think that this is an excellent opportunity for us to kind of recalibrate when it comes to that. But these projects are, you know, we need them. They need to happen. People are getting flooded out of their homes. Um, it is, uh, we've got roads that are about to collapse into streams. It is, it is needed, and um, I think that it is, it is the time, and I commend the staff for figuring out a way to get it all done and to make it manageable for the township uh, for now and in the long term. I just have a, a question around um, decisions that you make, Mr. Tate and Mr. White, around bond refinancing. So it's my recollection within like the past 12 months, I believe, we just saved the township a lot of money by refinancing bonds. So, you know, although I've heard some figures tonight that sound like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big commitment to, to, you know, take a loan to, to, to get a bond. But is it not your practice to continuously look for opportunity to reduce our debt, to refinance, and would this bond be um, looked at down the road for that? Uh, Madam President, great question. Um, in the past, 
In 2020 and 2021, we have successfully refunded four separate series of bonds. I'm sorry, four refundings, I think covering maybe possibly five issues in total. Um, with bank qualified bond funding, we are able to, um, for the first five years, we're unable to do any refunding, so we're locked in for five. But as soon as we hit that mark, uh, we have the opportunity to do the refunding. So we, that is part of our process in long-term financing. We are always on the outlook, and with the help of uh, with Michael Wolf, has been a tremendous asset to the township. Um, kind of having his finger on the pulse with what's going on in the market and discussing opportunities for refundings. Um, we do look at that and take advantage um, when recommended, when discussed, and when, when it's right. And the township has saved, I, I think, over our debt history. It's been upwards of about $20 million. If we had not done any refundings over the past um, 15 or so years, our overall debt service that we'd be carrying out for the next however many, 15 or 20 years, would have been $20 million higher. So refundings are an, an integral part of our process. And with the help of our outside professionals, we are always looking to take advantage of those opportunities when they're presented. Okay. So yes, thank you. That was a perfect question. Just, just real quick to add to that, because um, while Bob was talking, we actually keep tabs on the refundings that we've done um, dating back. So we refunded in 2010, 2012, 2013 when we eliminated the swap option, which is a significant amount of that savings. Um, we'd refunded twice in 15, again in 19, twice in 20, and twice in 21. So the accumulation of all those refundings in just real cash numbers, so not time value of money, but real cash, uh, is $10 million worth of savings. And that does not account for a, the time value of money, or the significant savings uh, of not having that swaption, uh, especially in a low interest rate environment, which we were heading towards at the time we made the decision, and it would have only compounded our expense over that period of time. So um, not having that on our books to pay, uh, it adds up to all that money. And that, as Bob pointed out, that it's part of our regular practice. Uh, whenever bonds are callable, they are immediately identified as such and monitored on an ongoing basis until we get to a point where we think it's uh, wise to bring it to the board. Okay, sir, are you, just a quick follow-up. Do you mind? Sir, um, so we can't refund these bonds. for We can't, uh, pardon me, call them in and refund for the next five years, which is standard. And I used to sell municipal bonds. I get that. Um, and, and I think it's great that you refund, but it's a part of the – it's a part of what you do, of what businesses do, you're essentially a business. It's a business side. If interest rates drop, I'm going to refinance. If they rise, well, I'm happy I have a low rate. That's my next point. You did great when interest rates were low. I get it. Now they're rising, and we don't know where they're going to be in five years for this $10 million. So can you tell me, and I, I don't know where these bonds are coming due, but if the way interest rates are going now, I, maybe there's some bonds that are going to be past the call date. I don't see that we're going to be doing many refundings in the near future if interest rates are, they're not going up, they're skyrocketing. Well, yeah, I mean, I, the, the quick answer is, is that if, if in a rising interest rate environment, uh, what's in front of the board tonight makes the most sense, and that's to lock in the rates at, at the lowest possible rate you have in front of you, which is tonight. Um, now, the balancing act that we're doing here is that we're not asking for all $14 million that we think we're going to need over the course of this plan. So there is some interest rate risk on the second tranche of this. But for the significant portion, uh, to maximize interest savings through keeping it bank qualified and at $10 million or less, uh, coupled with um, locking the rates in now, um, given the interest rate environment that you described, which is accurate, then this makes the most sense. Are we going to be able to refund anything in the near future with interest rates rising? Uh, I can't answer that off the top of my head, but I can assure you that if there is an opportunity, we'll bring it to the board, yeah. All right, um, thank you. And there are plenty of municipalities um, at the risk of, of tooting our own horn here, uh, which is not something I'm real good at. Uh, but there are plenty of municipalities in this country that do not pay attention, and because no one's calling you. Uh, when their bonds are callable, uh, you ha we have to be proactive. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so that, that's an action that has to be taken on our end to realize those savings. And if I could, just one further point. I, I heard Mr. Wolf refer to, um, he said it's like a mortgage. And um, for anyone who's listening or maybe, you know, has questions, when um, oft sometimes if someone does refinance a mortgage, they may restart the clock and enter into a new 30-year. So they're extending the life of their debt. I mean, and that's very possible it could happen. Um, with the last four refundings that the township did in 2021 and in 2020, uh, we, we lowered the rate, we reduced our debt service without extending the the life of the bonds. So we stayed within the original maturity dates on each of those four refundings. So that's also another important component in just helping to manage our overall debt uh, that, that is considered. I just wanted to point that out if anyone was comparing mortgages to bonds. Thank you. Um, any additional commissioner comment? Is there any public comment? I'll call the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Okay, passes, thank you. Moving on to... Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your service to our township. Um, let's see, I've lost my place, apologies. I am going to move to resolution 2022-49, approving an agreement between the township of Radnor and Retriever Inc, formerly Curb My Cutter, Curb My Clutter LLC, for the collection of certain recyclables from its residents. Um, I'm Mr. Gonna White, are you yes. going to talk to us about Retriever, please? Happy to. Um, so a little bit of history here is uh, back in uh, pre-pandemic, so 2018, 2019, the township um, and the Board of Commissioners approved a 12-month trial period with then Curb My Clutter as an alternative resource for our residents to take care of recycling items uh, that generally are not picked up by our crews, most notably e-recycling. Um, so we had a 12-month trial period. Uh, that trial period expired uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, and we are uh, bringing this back in front of the board now for uh, a more uh, ongoing or an ongoing relationship with Retriever, again, aimed at providing residents an alternative for taking care of um, you know, e-recycling e uh, and those types of things that um, the township does not collect. Uh, it does cost a fee for the resident. That's all done through Retriever directly. Retriever will set up the time to come and collect. Uh, they will receive payment. Um, and as part of this agreement, the township will receive back 10% of those payments made. Um, and at the same time, on the other end of the, the recycling agreement, uh, for any of the items collected that would have otherwise gone through our recycling stream, we are not paying the uh, recycling fee that we pay on a monthly basis for that tonnage. So. Um, uh, obviously, that's not the e-recycling because we don't collect that. But for any of the other items, you know, every every pound that doesn't go through our program or our system uh, is money saved on the township side. So we're saving uh, money there. We are getting amounts back on the fees paid by the residents for the special collection. Um, and as noted, right now, it's for anyone that has electronics and, and these some of these specialty items, it is very difficult to recycle. Um, this provides an option um, and residents can use it they can choose not to um, there are regularly e-recycling events the township uh, typically hosts one um, there are other uh, options for that so there it's just um, again another option for the residents to to take care of this um, and the compelling argument to bring this back in front of the board is that during that 12 months when it was minimal minimally advertised and promoted there was still um, I forget the exact tonnage, 15 to 20,000 pounds of uh, recycling material collected. So uh, with a more permanent arrangement um, and a more proactive approach, not only on our side, but retrievers to promote the recycling program, you know, that number is expected to grow um, considerably. Uh, in, in terms of the amount that it brings back to the township, it's, it's, we're talking dollars. It's not anything that's going to, um, you know, generate the money that's significant enough to really move the needle much. But um, every dollar counts, and it, it does 
offset some of our costs to, to take care of the recycling that we do. So uh, that's why we brought it here tonight um, and for the board's consideration. Thanks. I'm going to actually ask for a motion. I don't think I did that. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. And a second. second. Thank second. you. Um, is there, um, well, I'll start with Commissioner Comment. I just have a one question about um, you referred to that we had had this contract before, and uh, but this isn't a renewal at the end of that year. Is there a reason that we have not had this service for? Sometime. No, quite honestly, with all the change that happened in 2020 and everything going on, it just it fell off the radar. Um, I, it, it, if we could rewind and go back to that date, I would present the same thing to that board then. I appreciate it. I just wanted to be clear that there was no issue with the company. We didn't have any issue with how they uh, provided service to our residents. Correct. Great. None that we're aware of. Okay. Any other uh, comments from commissioners? So I just have a quick question. So in looking at the contract, it looks like it's up to us to market it. Do they provide us any sort of support when it comes to marketing or any materials or anything like that? Yeah, we'll, we'll lean on them for the branding. Uh, but what we're agreeing to is putting it out through our website um, and promoting it in that way. This is actually, uh, Commissioner Borowski, there is a... Um, a section of the contract that um, retrievers shall work together with the township to create co-branded advertising and educational materials. Yeah, that no, would I be great. see that it'll be co-branded, but it seems like it's still our but responsibility right. <laughs> to do it. Bill, um, what was the net loss or gain from the uh, just numbers? I mean, does this, is this a, does this, did the township make money off of it? Did we save money off of it? Is this costing money because um, the residents are confused and we're, I mean, what's just, yeah. what, what, you know, it, to me, to someone at home, just, you know, you can speak to what's in here, pardon, and in the contract, but what are the raw numbers uh, and how it affects staff and, um, you know, uh, do the, you know, has the feedback been good from, if you've heard from the residents and is this, saving us money is this costing us money are we making money on it so um there is no net loss it's a contingency based program to where um two elements of financial impact so one is the cost the revenue sharing that's required of retriever as part of this so we will get 10 percent of every fee they collect so that's that's a that's a gain on the township side in receiving that money that we currently don't get and then there is a savings too. As mentioned, every, every pound of recyclable material that is collected through Retriever that would have otherwise gone through our stream and collected by our staff is a savings onto us because we pay, so you know, based what, on 86 tonnage. 86 a ton, yeah, like yep. 86 a ton. Yeah, so we're, we're, there's a little bit of revenue uh, and a little bit of savings on the, you, in the 12 months. Yeah, um, do you have a number? I'm just, I, in the 12 yeah. months, it was in the ballpark of $1,000 of revenue sharing. Um, the savings mm -hmm. on the the savings on the savings recycling side is a little tougher to nail down only because we're, we don't get a precise accounting on what would have been put out on recycling day for our guys versus what is being paid. So it's, it's difficult to really nail that number down. Sure. Well, I mean, I guess you could nail it down very unscientifically by saying what was our recycle tonnage last year versus this year, knowing that there's probably more development, but some people can move. Is that on pace or is that, I mean, yeah, there's a question the, for Ricky. I think maybe. there's just, yeah, sorry. I think there's just too many elements that go into what people are putting out for recycling to nail it down to just this one agreement. Okay. A lot of moving well, parts. What mm -hmm. we will get, uh, with absolute precision is the tonnage collected by retriever coupled with the fee that they charged and collected for that. So on an on a ongoing basis, we'll have that information that we can report back on. Can we, can you get that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And we have it for the 12 months. Um, for the life of me, I, I cannot find that summary in my computer. It's, it's upstairs. But uh, and so, it. so in the, and I know that commissioner Abel brought this up with several years ago, but four years, four years ago. Um, and it's been successful in your mind for the 12 I, months I did, that, I, yeah I yeah. mean I did vote for it back then I'm just yeah hmm. and it was not widely promoted uh, as I recall uh, but it was even with that it was still 
I mean, okay. the tonnage that was collected was got it. So impressive enough to bring so it back. So fine. Last point. So this is, there are three bullet points. So we made a thousand dollars. We're pulling money, or we're taking uh, recyclables out at eighty-six, give or take, bucks a, a ton, and there's not much of a problem when it comes to the residents or public works. It's not an issue there. Am I am I correct on all three of those bullet points? Yeah, the more the, or less. The yeah. amount we're paying for tonnage is a little. It, it fluctuates from month to month, and on average, in 2021, it was closer to $44 per ton. For recyclable? For recyclable. And what's yeah. trash? Trash is a fixed rate of $78 okay, per ton. Okay, that's, that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Okay, thanks. Sean, Sean, you could also save 10000 by not doing the e-recycling day and using retriever to collect recyclable or to collect e-recyclables all but year long. Thank be, you, Commissioner. We well, will deal with that issue. Well, 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 well no, no, that's, that, it's, it's not it's, before us. But no, no, but, no, but it, it's, it's, I know, but it's a good, it's a good question. But, it's not. but I'm, does, I'm does that cost? Commissioner Farhi, I'm going to not have that conversation until it's before us. We don't have a recycling day before us. We have retriever before us. So I'm going to ask for, um, uh, I, I, I think your, that this is hurting. Phone? I, I will say this, and that's fine. My point of order, if you don't want to bring it up, fine. I think that this is what part of a conversation is, and I think this hurts the uh, the, the community because we're trying to save. We're stewards of the Sean, township I'm and stewards of money. I'm trying to give Jake an opportunity to speak tonight. Well, so. I was just responding to yeah, he, he is responding because I, I was he was asking what the savings is to the township. Yeah, I, I was what would the savings be? Would would, would, be. would this company cost if I go? If, you know, the shredding day or recyclable day, if I say, here, here's my tube TV, I don't want it anymore, they're going to say, look, it's 20 bucks for us to take it. Because then, then that's, then I could have just thrown it in my, in my trash can. I don't know if, Bill, you take tube TV. No? Okay, I didn't say that. All right, that's Please my don't. question. Yeah, I, I don't know what they charge. I mean, there is a charge for those tube televisions, but they don't charge for all e recyclables, do they? I thought it was just a few items. Now, my understanding is that there is a charge for the recyclables. Yeah, so the standard TV and CRT monitors, $35 per unit. The rear projection, extra large CRT televisions, including those in a wood cabinet, which if you're still holding on to one of those, um, that's $100 per unit. So it's just a few of the older, bigger items. Yeah. But and I, I assume all of those items that they would take would be listed. Yes. Yeah. As part of the promotional material. Yep. So, so what's, what's the cost for that versus bulk trash day? Well, the township won't take televisions in bulk trash. Okay. Because we, no we have no way to get rid of them. Uh, we those won't be accepted at the recycling plant so that's where this option comes into play got it thanks so there is if you in the contract or at the end of the contract so it does have the and there also is a convenience fee convenience fee per collection without an above reference fee which i mean i guess means anything else because it does list these 35 for these for standard TV, a hundred for rear projection. Microwaves are ten dollars. CFC devices are fifty, and then a convenience fee per collection without an above referenced fee of ten dollars. So my reading of that is that everything else costs ten dollars. So it's not a completely free service. There is a fee of ten dollars. It would seem at minimum. It sounds Unless like that's I'm a, col wrong. a pickup fee, though. And they do come and pick your stuff up. It's not like you have to schlep it into your trunk and schlep it to the e-recycling day. They come and pick it up. I think that's what the 10. I'm guy, I guess. Yeah, yeah it says convenience fee. So obviously somebody picking it up, that would be a convenience. <laughs> but it's not completely free. It's free to the township. Right, not to residents. Um, is there any other comment? Is there a public comment? I'm going to call the vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Moving on to um, item 2022-52, uh, authorizing the payment of Donato Spaventa and Sons Incorporated for change orders number two, updated traffic signal backplates, 
Number three, additional work and material required to remove the guardrail and to add sidewalk. Number four, additional copper cable. And number five, elimination of street signs. To Fen Fenceco Inc. for the railing installation and to Doyle and McDonald Inc. for the replacement landscaping for the North Wayne Pedestrian Safety Project in the total amount of $24,382.80 to be funded from the proceeds of the 2019 general obligation bond. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. second. And does this go to? Yeah, we, we went to the bullpen tonight. We got Mr. <laughs> Dennis Capella here and, and Steve's absence, and he's got all the information on this, uh, this item. Thank you, Mr. White. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, yes, what we're asking uh, tonight is for approval of the final change orders uh, for the, this project, uh, as well as a couple of additional expenses that we've uh, incurred. Uh, this is for the North Wayne Pedestrian Improvement Project, uh, the intersection of uh, North Wayne, Poplar, Pennsylvania, Station Avenue, West Avenue, uh, that whole uh, area there. Um, we are pleased that this project has moved along uh, with, I guess, some limited disruption to the Wayne Business District. That was our primary concern. We wanted to make sure that it was completed as, as quickly as possible. And uh, this contractor was able to do that. Uh, not without some issues. Most of the issues revolving around uh, getting the uh, control cabinet uh, to the other side of the railroad tracks from where it was uh, existing at this point at the intersection, uh, essentially outside of the Cornerstone restaurant. Um, and we found, I guess not unexpectedly, that uh, there are problems when you, when you do something like that uh, in, the, in the Wayne area, in the Wayne Business District area. Um, first, uh, I guess about, uh, well, in March, the board approved a uh, change order to move most of that, uh, that service from the existing cabinet to the new one. Uh, we, were, we found that we could not do it in easily. We had to go under the sidewalk. We had planned to take some of the sidewalk out um, and then we had to cross the street in order to get to, uh, to the new cabinet. Now we uh, uh, found that there are additional problems as we started to, uh, as the contractor started to move uh, through that area, take out uh, some of the sidewalk. We found that the, uh, the curbs uh, completely disintegrated. Uh, we had hoped to keep the guardrail, the guardrail that, uh, that was there uh, intact, but uh, that fell uh, down along with the curb. So we found that we then had to replace the entire so sidewalk uh, to do this, as well as the driveway going into the uh, into the uh, SEPTA parking lot, um, we uh, we then had some additional problems. Well, I guess along with that, we had to uh, we wanted to replace the guide rail, and then we had to get the fence to, in order to do that. So we had to add that as well. Uh, there, uh, some of the uh, additional copper wiring had to be replaced. Um, and, uh, and, and we took care of that. We did, uh, in the process, uh, there was some uh, damage to, uh, to some of the, the flower bed, I guess, uh, from where the old uh, uh, cabinet was located. So we've had to re replace uh, that as well. Um, all of this then totaling the, uh, the 20, uh, $24,300 fee and uh, again, we're looking for a, a approval from the commissioners to finish off this project with these expenses and, uh, and close out the project. Uh, we have some inspection work that we may still need to do, but other than that, the project is completed. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion? Did I? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, is there any uh, commissioner comment? Is there any uh, public comment? I am not seeing any. I will call the vote. All in favor say aye. aye. And um, 
that takes us to uh, the reports you. of board liaisons. Is there anybody who would like to report out from a commission, committee, or um, board? Um, so this is for Parks and Rec. Uh, May 12th, our next Parks and Rec meeting is going to be a field trip at the Radnor Township Civic Association. It's May 12th at 6.30. That's at 248 Highland Avenue. I'm going to suggest to Tammy that we make that maybe 7 o'clock in case people don't get it and come here, and we'll put a note on the door stating where it is. Um, Tammy... Um, I know Tammy worked uh, with uh, Commissioner Borowski as well as members of the community for those communication boards for some of our um, uh, nonverbal and special need children, and I think those are great. So if you see them at the parks, you'll understand what they what they're there, and it was a uh, uh, great, and it's uh, at very little cost to the township, and I think it can make the world of difference um, for people um, that have um, that disability. Um, May, 20, May 21st, um, there's going to be a uh, event at Emlinton L Park, which is going to be a uh, poster unveiling of Emlinton L. And there's going to be members of the Coast Guard and members of uh, the Delaware, um, uh, the Delaware County Sports Legends Hall of Fame are going to be there. I'll be there. So um, everybody here that can hear me, you are all invited. We'd love to have you here. Uh, have you there and then two more uh, items they are not necessarily parks and rec issues but they do relate to the township are the memorial day parade which i guess is memorial day and there's going to be a july 4th parade in garrett hill as well so thank you and i hope to see you there oh and one, one last thing one last thing there was Ar there was an arbor day celebration at odoricio park and that was um pretty nice i know that they planted a bunch of trees there and again to Commissioner Abel's point, yes, we do need to do something with Oda Riccio. It's, it's not on the back burner. Thanks. Any other uh, reports from board liaisons? Moving on to new business. Okay, I just have something sort of quick, but um, that uh, Commissioner Jones and I have been working on, and we're looking for some consensus of the board to support um, an effort by a neighboring township, Newtown Township. So Commissioner Jones and I have been speaking with um, Supervisor Kathy Chandless, as well as uh, the board, the Board of the chair of the Board of Supervisors for Newtown Township, Leonard Altieri. They are trying to get a larger post office for Newtown Square. Um, so I don't know if anyone's ever been there. It's located in the um, shopping center where the Acme is up on Westchester Pike, and it is literally the size of a postage stamp itself. So they moved it from it where there was a freestanding um, post office for many, many, many years, and then they did some development. I think the Wawa, new Wawa is there, <laughs> but um, they tore it down and they moved it into the the. Um, the shopping mall, and it's really small. And since then, um, Newtown Township has experienced so a 23% increase in its um, population. So they've had a lot of development over there. The, um, the DuPont Estate was developed. They're doing a ton of work on the Alice Preserve. So there's a lot more residents. And they're trying to get a larger post office. In order to do that, they need to go to Congresswoman Scanlon. Um, and they're trying to work through like the federal process of um, securing a larger post office. Ward 4, a lot of Newtown Square, I actually live in Newtown Square. Uh, Newtown Square is, does exist in parts of Radnor. Um, so Commissioner Jones and I, in speaking with them, we suggested that, we, that Radnor might be able to join in their effort and support what they're trying to do and send a letter to uh, Congresswoman Scanlon's office to advocate for a larger post office. They are doing a resolution. Um, they are voting on it tonight, actually. I don't think we need to do a resolution. I was just thinking um, a letter uh, supporting uh, the board chair, uh, Leonard Altieri, and uh, Supervisor Chandless in their efforts um, to advocate for a larger post office so that it would um, 
you know, have a little bit of, a little more oomph. So there's two municipalities asking for it, both of which are in Congresswoman Scanlon's um, district. And I think it would be um, neighborly for us to help support their effort. So I just wanted to see consensus of the board. I'm glad to write the letter. And Commissioner Jones, we can circulate it. People can look at it. Um, we'll probably model it a lot after their resolution, which talks a lot about the growth in the township and the need uh, to have a larger post office. Um, also one that's more accessible, that literally, if you get more than two people in this post office, they're waiting outside in the cold weather. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I'm seeking this evening. I have a question about, um, do you have any understanding of what, I mean, I can appreciate, we've got, um, uh, we have residents in Newtown Square, so it affects um, our people, and very, I'm very supportive of it. I guess I'm questioning, um, do we have any idea what the process is to get a new post office? I mean. I don't know what the whole process is. I know that, uh, the first start is getting Congresswoman Scanlon to at least acknowledge the problem and then I think take it to the um, US Postal Service through the federal channels. So um, this is really just to help, I think, uh, support the effort and show her that, you know, if she's going to do this, it's not just one township, there's, you know, multiple townships, um, multiple people that um, you know, can be impacted by a small change. You know, I don't think they're asking for a brand new, separate, standalone post office, but maybe just moving it to a larger rental space, because I'm guessing they just lease the space in the, um, in the shopping center right now. Good, two questions. Um, so have you spoken to the postmaster? I, I, I don't know if this is our place to go uh, jump in front of, um, uh, a postmaster and to uh, the local postmaster at that um, at that office I'm sure he's aware of the problem and he's said stuff I'm sure that that location was vetted out by the the post office when they moved there and um, and that would be also a function of if you're saying that there's only two people that can get in there at a time I mean how do they have any um, uh, uh, boxes post office boxes how many post office boxes do they have in there you can only get two people in. I mean, that would, to me, would be like a f six by six room, right? How many, po how many, uh, you said two people, right? So uh, I'm not how, sure how many, of the- What's the square feet? So I, I don't know the square footage of the existing store front. So it's a storefront. Um, there's a small um, counter, and then they've got, you know, all the things they sell in there. It, really is a very small space. I would say, I, I don't know, maybe it's 20 by 20. I don't know, it's very small. Okay. The post office so boxes, the there, post right. office boxes are actually down a hallway that um, connects up to the back of the, um, to the back of the shopping center. So they're not actually in the post office itself, they're actually on the outside of the post office. So, um, you know, I don't have all that data. What we, well, they, uh, what mm -hmm. the research that the supervisors in Newtown have done has led them to the fact that they need a Congress, someone from their congressman, woman, to advocate for this with the postmaster. It can't come from the township. It needs to come from the congresswoman. So that is why they've gone this route. Um, they've asked us to, well, they didn't ask us. I offered to support them um, okay. so. because we do have residents in Newtown Square um, in Radnor. So, um, okay, but so, yeah. so, all right, so thanks. So that seems that it's more, again, it's more of a function of the, the, the postmaster. What's a, the furthest distance from a resident that lives in Newtown Square, Radnor, to that post office? Um, I understand if something's certified and they can't get it, then they gotta go drive there as opposed to if they're just gonna send a package in Wayne. What's, what's, what's the distance? These are the questions that I have that you're gonna say, oh, well, it sounds like a good idea, let's go write a letter. Um, 
but what are the facts? I'm just, you know, these are facts, these are data points, and to say, well, they're doing it in Newtown Square, so we should do it here without giving me facts or facts from the postmaster and stuff like that, I, I, I'm just, I, I don't know what I'm going to agree to. Just, no, I think, um, if so, I heard so my question is, is, is that what's the it's distance? It's not us asking, it's us supporting their ask. And because we have residents in Newtown Square, if the majority of Newtown Square, if their supervisors are seeking this, I think it's just, you know, being neighborly sure. to allow uh, but, uh, I guess them my, to move forward on the process. Okay, I guess my with big some support from a sure. neighboring friendly community. Okay, so I guess my big concern is that it's being sold that only two people can stand in there at a time, and now I'm being told that it's a 20 by 20 storefront. So if it's not in a good location, that's fine. If the location is bigger, that's fine. But I'm not getting the facts that I need to know. And, and one of them deals with the postmaster of that, uh, of that um, post office. Is it centrally located? Other than the fact that it's too small, which it doesn't sound that it is, I, I, I don't, it just sounds like it's a, a pile on to pile on. So Sean, um, the supervisor of Newtown reached out to me and she told me specifically that they need a bigger post office, point blank. She didn't describe the size of it. Two people fitting there in there might be hyperbole, maybe it's four. She's telling us it's small. Okay, so, so she wants to address have, have Mary Gay Scanlon, and we had a contact there, so we helped her with that. And we said, because we do have residents in Newtown, you know, that use that sure. post office, we would be happy to support the letter to Mary Gay. She told us that's the direction she needed to take, and it had nothing to do with, you know, maybe she had a discussion with her postmaster. And he said that that's what they needed sure. to do in order to. Have, have you been in there move. and seen? I it? have been in there. Yes, okay. I, I rented in Newtown Square for a year, and we used to use that post office. It's okay. quite small. Okay, thanks. So, so a few weeks ago, um, <clears throat> Commissioner Farhi uh, proposed or, or requested a sense of the board to write a letter um, to, to state officials asking for a tax. Um, a, ta a, a tax break on, I think, gasoline prices, if I, if I recall correctly. And it was, this board said no because other folks were already on it and making contact to those officials. So, I mean, let's be consistent. I mean, if other boards are, are writing the letters, let, like, why are we getting involved? Um, well, second, second point. You know, not to be cynical. It's for the same reason why we honored Roberto Winters that night. So, so, second, second point, not to be cynical, but I, I worked in a congressional office for several years. Writing a letter will have essentially zero impact. If you want to make an impact and get the attention of the staff, because that's who you're really going after, every neighbor should call and inundate their phone lines all day. Um, writing a letter will do absolutely nothing. I just want to clarify, Without speaking for anyone else, that's not the reason why I declined to write a letter seeking to repeal the gasoline tax. That was also not my reason. Well, it was my reason given. So, um, well, I did give my reason. It was because the governor was already acting. So, to ask the governor to do something he had already announced publicly that he was doing seemed to be, you know, you really want to talk about no, no, that's not, not having an effect. It's a state that tax it. as, as well as the federal. And I think it's just a bad idea. So, you know, as Anna Marie said, we had a fellow um, commissioner or a supervisor, a colleague, elected colleague, reach out to us. Um, we did connect her with Mary Gay Scanlon's chief of staff, Heather Boyd, and they are speaking with her office. Um, I think that, you know, us as a township, because we also have residents who live in Newtown Square. I am one of them. I've been in that post office many times. I've stood outside many times at Christmas time when the line is really long and people are waiting outside. Um, you know, we have residents and just thought it would be nice to support them so that they don't look like they're uh, making this request on their own. I don't know the process after this. 
it is something that Congresswoman Scanlon's office has offered to assist in advocating with the U.S. Postal Service, and I'm reading this directly from the resolution, um, to just try to get a larger space, a larger post office space um, for an entire township in Newtown Township. So um, while we are not in Newtown Township, we do have residents who live in Newtown Square. They reside in Ward 4. So that is why I am bringing it forward. I don't think it needs to be a big fight about this, um, but I guess there may be those who want to have a fight about it. Um, so I'm just seeking consensus of the board, and we can just draft a letter saying we support um, Newtown's efforts to try to secure a larger post office. So asking a question isn't a fight. Making a statement isn't a fight. Uh, to Commissioner Abel's point, if this is such a big case, why is this being brought up now? I mean, I'd love to see a petition from these neighbors, from people. I mean, this is the first that I've heard of it. So without hearing from other neighbors, other people, it's not, it can't be that big of a, of a deal. I don't see anyone. I mean, Sarah's here, Barron's here. You're here, sorry for your name. So I'll just go back to my original question so that, and sorry. I did not mean for this to be a protracted conversation. Um, I'm just seeking consensus to write a letter. So if we have consensus, we'll write a letter. If we don't, we won't. So unfortunately, um, I am not hearing consensus on this. Um, Commissioner Farhi and Commissioner Abel, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'm not hearing In, in this one have, case, you can speak for me, okay. yes. I am not hearing that you have a support for this, so. So is two, so four, so is. But a consensus would be all of us saying. Oh, all of us? So if this is something. Oh, I thought consensus was just a majority. Just a majority? Okay. Um, so I will, um, I guess I just call a pulse of the others who I haven't heard from. Uh, Commissioner Myers, are you in support of this? Sure, I'm in support mostly because we do have citizens of Radnor Township that use this post office. Commissioner Larkin? Yeah, it's a letter. I'm gonna say we have consensus. Thank you for bringing it forward. Um, Thank you. Is, is there any other new business? Is there any old business? Just uh, one, one. while we have uh, Mr. Peter, while we have you here. I just want to confirm that we're still on pace to have something back uh, regarding outdoor dining uh, at the next meeting. Um, I did not have a discussion with John okay, over John that, but I will talk to him sure. tomorrow John, on that and get you an answer. Great. John said a month, so I'm assuming that there's this meeting and next meeting. Maybe 27 days versus 31 days, but I think I trust me. I will have great pleasure in harassing John about it. Oh, okay. If you need help harassing him, give me a call. Will do. Um, any other old business from commissioners? And any public participation? Mara, I'd like to just say, <clears throat> um, it turns out that there's something called P PA Act 169 that lays out the format of a report that the treasurer or the tax collector is supposed to present every month to the municipality. And um, we did it in February. I looked at it. Um, it's got some facts in it. I, I think it's somewhat unsatisfactory in terms of really communicating any context uh, but it did show that we collected over $2.3 million in township real estate taxes out of a total of 14.6. When we did the March report, which is also in your packet, um, I added several items at the bottom section to try, in addition to the standard report. And I'd like to try to make it meaningful if we have to report it. Uh, I'm open to any suggestions uh, on making it better. In the meantime, I've got some other ideas that we'll put in for the April one, but you're going to be getting a report on a monthly basis showing uh, tax collections. 
It turns out uh, at the end of the discount period, one of the interesting things is that um, almost 85% of our taxpayers participated during the discount period. And the, uh, that represented 83.5% of the face amount. Uh, but I'm not wedded to anything, anything that, since it's going to be a monthly report and we're supposed to produce it, we might as well try to make it as, give you as much meaningful information as we can. So any suggestions you have, I'm open to. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I look forward to going through it. I would ask that um, the commissioners take a look and um, provide you any comment, you know, by email or phone call between meetings so that you can get feedback from us about the usefulness and the format and um, items that we might think are missing. So we will take a look and respond to you. Does that sound okay? Okay. I make a motion to adjourn and second all in favor thank you